Good morning, George Peabody School. How are you doing this week? I am back to talk to you about our next Komochi Key to Communication, Key 2. Last week, we learned all about Key 1, getting someone's attention in a respectful way. It's been so much fun talking to all of you about how to keep um, respectful eye contact, how to do gentle taps if you're trying to get someone's attention. Hugdipus has learned so much from all of you this week, so thank you for that. And this week, I have my friend Kat with me, and Kat is going to help us learn all about key two. Key two is use a talking tone of voice instead of a fighting tone of voice. I'm going to put key two on the wall to add to our list. Okay, here we go. So using a talking tone of voice is so important, so hard to do though. Let me give you an example. Just today, Kat was working on her Chromebook and it stopped working. And she forgot to use her talking tone of voice, which Kat often forgets. So it sounded something like this. Ah, oh, Miss Keen, my Chromebook's not working. Fix it. Oh, cat. Hmm. Now, do you think that using this fighting tone of voice is going to make cat's problem smaller or bigger? <sighs> Probably bigger, right? Because I have a feeling that if cat is saying something to me like "fix it" in a fighting tone of voice, I'm probably going to be responding to cat about her tone of voice and less about helping her with her Chromebook right in that moment. So I want Kat to be using a talking tone of voice even when she is feeling upset. Now it's so hard to do, isn't it? Because Kat in that moment was probably feeling really cranky. Kat was also probably feeling really disappointed that her Chromebook wasn't working. Right Kat? Hmm. She might have even been feeling mad. Maybe something was due. Maybe she had been trying to work on something all morning. So frustrating, right? So it's really hard to use a talking tone of voice when we are feeling disappointed, cranky, mad, or even other things like frustrated, right? So this would be more helpful though, and this is what I wanna show you. This is what a talking tone of voice might look like in that situation. Oh, my Chromebook's not working. Miss Keen, can you please help me? Sure, Kat, let me give it a try. That seems really frustrating. Let's look at it together. So in that moment, do you think Kat was still feeling cranky, still feeling frustrated? Yeah, I'm not asking you to not feel cranky, to not feel mad or frustrated. All feelings are okay, all behaviors are not. So we can still have our mad and upset and cranky feelings, but the challenge is to see how we can make our problems smaller by remembering to use that talking tone of voice. This is not an easy key to follow at school or at home, but when we do it, we make our problems smaller. And we, when we can get our grown-ups to do it too, it makes things go more smoothly. So this is one that we can ask our grown-ups to try too. So I'm gonna ask you to work on this at home with your families. When you're watching a show together or a movie, watch out for the characters in the shows. See if you can notice when characters in the movie or the TV show are using a talking tone of voice or a fighting tone of voice, especially when they get mad or cranky. Can you find characters who catch themselves and calm down quickly? See if you can try and point it out and pause the movie or the show and notice it and say, did you see that? Did you see what happened? They used a talking tone of voice. If characters are using a fighting tone of voice, see what happens. Do you notice how the people around them are feeling? Do you notice if the problems are getting bigger or smaller? I have a feeling they might get bigger, but try it out and see. All right, um, as a family or as a class, 
see if you can notice or think about um, someone in your life who you admire for being able to catch themselves um, and try to use try to use a talking tone of voice even when they're upset do you know someone like that do you know someone who catches themselves and says things like um, when they get upset they start to get really mad and then they say okay never mind never mind let's calm down I don't need to be yelling right now and then they talk instead of yell do you know someone like that is there someone you admire for using a talking tone of voice even when they're upset it's hard to do but if you see if you know someone or think can think of someone you admire and talk about it as a class or talk about it as a family and then I have another suggestion think about um, someone you um, can appreciate and mention it to that person tell that person that you appreciate it when they do that and then finally is there a time when you end up using a fighting tone of voice? Is it when your technology doesn't work? Is it when you're asked to play with a sibling and you just know that's usually when you fight and you use that fighting tone of voice? Sometimes we end up using that fighting tone of voice with the people we love and we are closest to. Um, we might use a fighting tone of voice with our siblings and we would never do that with a friend. Isn't that interesting? But if we can practice using that talking tone of voice, um, we can make those problems smaller, those problems that might end up getting our grown-ups more upset. And the more that we can make our problems smaller, the more our grown-ups problems will get smaller and the less that they might need to use a fighting tone of voice with us. Um, so think about when it is that you use a fighting tone of voice. Grown-ups, you can try that too. Is it in the mornings when you're trying to get everybody ready for school? Um, is it when you're at the end of the day and you're trying to wrap up work um, and you're trying to move on to getting dinner ready and um, you just need a few extra minutes? Is there a phrase you could say like, I just need 10 more minutes rather than I just need a little more time. <laughs> so we all have a little bit of cat in us. Is there a way that we can try to use our talking tone of voice so that we can all make our problems a little smaller and make this time that we are living in go a little more smoothly? All right, everyone, let's practice key two. And next week, I'll be back with key three. But I look forward to hearing all about those times when you can try that key two talking tone of voice. See you next week, everyone. Bye.